following is a non-profit fandub. Lost Alice belongs to the Shall We Date series, which is owned by NTT Solmer. Please support the official release on Dera Terme or Story Jar. We hope you enjoy! I knew it then. Luke is hiding something. I would have been hard-pressed to explain why I felt that way, because it was a culmination of so many things. So, I... I think you're hiding something, Luke. My words caused apprehension to cloud those pretty jade-colored eyes. For some reason, the more important something is to you, the quieter you become. I'm sure it's partly due to your personality, but... Even so, there are limits. <sighs> You're a hopeless case. I shrugged my shoulders with a sigh. Amelie. I laughed and continued to speak as sadness clouded Luke's features. It's alright, Luke. What do you mean, it's alright? We've only known each other a short while, but I think I've come to understand you a little, Luke. I already know you're not the kind of guy to do something like this just to be mean. <sighs> Luke gasped in surprise at my words. It's alright, I'll wait until you're ready to tell me. The fact that you're quiet tells me now is not the right time, is it? I would be lying if I said it didn't bother me, but it seemed pointless to lose my patience. Luke narrowed his eyes in obvious delight. Thanks, Amelie. Don't mention it. It's really no big deal. I laughed in reply. What were a few secrets if I got to see that expression on Luke's face? <laughs> One moment, Luke was deep in thought, and the next moment, he looked up with determination. Amelie, I... <laughs> Suddenly, he groaned in pain and fell to his knees. Luke! What's the matter? I immediately moved to kneel down beside him when my eyes widened in shock. Suddenly, a pitch black hole silently opened close to where Luke and I were kneeling. And from that hole emerged... <laughs> oh, who are you? Before us emerged a deep hooded presence. Inside the hood was a mysterious black mass with no discernible features. It can't be human. I didn't need to be told that we were in a very precarious situation. It's the Spinner of Tails. The Spinner of Tails? I couldn't understand what Luke was struggling to say. There was only one thing I was sure of. You're the reason Luke is suffering, aren't you? The man known as the Spinner of Tales <laughs> sniggered at my question. What if I am? Don't you understand? It's very simple. I tried to approach the Spinner of Tales. Stop tormenting him right this instant! Surprisingly, Luke put an end to my barrage against the Spinner of Tales. Stop it, Amelie! Luke? Why? <laughs> Luke didn't answer. Instead, he held his arm out to the side. His arm blocked me, either to hold me back or to protect me. I couldn't brush his arm aside. I stopped and glared at the spinner of tails. Matter. You should not forget the rules of Wonderland. This is a warning. I sincerely hope you will heed it. You call that a warning? It sounds more like a threat. Indeed, he was saying if you break the rules, you will suffer. The spinner of tails then moved so his hooded face was aimed at me. It cannot be helped. The rules are absolute. With those parting words, his body gently swayed. A large black hole opened up behind him, just as when he appeared. As the Spinner of Tails was about to disappear into the pitch-black chasm, Luke spat out in a raspy voice. I won't let you have your way. Luke? I rushed to catch him as he collapsed weakly. 
Ugh, are all guys this heavy? There's no way I can carry you on my own. Well, if it isn't Alice, what on earth is going on here? I turned around at the sound of that familiar voice, and there stood Joker. Uh, let's see, judging from the situation, well, it looks like you're in the middle of a love scene with the Hatter. What gave you that idea? Isn't it obvious that he completely passed out? <laughs> There's no need to be embarrassed, Alice. Love comes in all different shapes and forms. Wouldn't you agree? I agree with the latter part of your statement, but I wholeheartedly deny the first half. Again, this is not a love scene. In any case, I'm so glad you're here, Joker. I need to carry Luke to my... Uh, to Alice's house. Could you help me out? Huh? Can I pass on that? And oh You're the guy here, aren't you? In response to my tirade, he heaved a heavy sigh. Uh, good grief. I thought so when I first met you, but... You're really tough. Though I won't go into specifics. I'm well aware of that. Why? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Joker gave me a light smile and crouched down next to Luke and me. With Joker's help, we were able to make our way back to Alice's house. By the time we made it back to Alice's house, it was already dark outside. So, where should I put the Hatter? Lay him down on my bed. Oh, you're letting a man into your bed? Joker narrowed his eyes in surprise. I see, so you're not the kind of girl that's mean to those things. You're just being mean, aren't you? I glared at him, but Joker just said, Hmm? And tilted his head to the side. The innocent gesture was so contrived, I felt my temples twitch. Of course I don't usually let a stranger, let alone a man, sleep in my bed. But this is an emergency, don't you see? Stop teasing me about it. You're right. I apologize, Alice. It's alright, as long as you understand. We work together to ease Luke onto the bed. I can't say he looks peaceful in his sleep, since he passed out from the excruciating pain. I noticed the sweat on his forehead and gently wiped it off with a handkerchief. So, Alice? Joker gave me a sideways glance as I watched Luke sleep. What exactly happened to Luke? Isn't it time you filled me in? Yeah, you're right. Despite Joker's teasing, he helped without asking for an explanation. I wanted to thank him for his help. Thanks for your help, Joker. He didn't say anything, but smiled gently. I started to explain to him what happened. Hmm, I see. Joker didn't seem at all surprised by what I told him, and just nodded quietly. You seem satisfied with the explanation. Did you know about the Spinner of Tails? It's all so confusing to me, no matter how much I think about it. My memory showed no signs of coming back. Maybe if I could remember, it would help solve this puzzle. Joker continued to regard me, the corners of his mouth curving slightly as he laughed lightly. <laughs> Poor Alice. You have no idea. The tone of his voice was so different from his usual teasing, I instinctively held my breath. I refused to look away from his rose-colored stare, slowly opening my mouth to speak. Joker, what? I started to ask him, what do you know? Joker, don't. Oh, unnoticeably, Luke was awake. Luke slowly pulled himself up into a sitting position and glared at Joker with anger. Don't confuse Amelie by opening your big mouth. Well, I guess I'm no longer needed here. Joker held up his arms in mock surrender and started to <laughs> giggle. He then turned around and exited the door of the sweet dream room. Thanks for today, Joker! He must have heard me call out to him. His hand emerged from the open door and waved back and forth several times. Um, Luke... Are you sure you're alright? No more pain? Can I get you something cold to drink? 
He was awake, but I was still worried. No, I'm fine. For now... Luke shook his head lightly and gently held my hand in his. Just stay with me. Oh, I'm going to get the wrong idea if you keep looking at me and saying things like that. It have been impossible not to feel self-conscious. What are you feeling, Luke? Are you just lonely? Will anyone do? Or... Just thinking about it would get me no answers. And it didn't seem right to ask him when he is in this condition. Mmm. I released a sigh. There's so much going on. My mind is a mess. Amelie. Hmm? Luke pulled me closer. His face was right in front of me. But before I could even ask to show my care... Ah! He placed a gentle kiss on my hair. W what is it? What's wrong, Luke? It happened before when he suddenly embraced me, and this was just as sudden. But now that it happened a second time... Maybe that embrace wasn't so impulsive after all. Maybe Luke really cares for me. I can't help but feel that he does. It's alright, Amelie. Luke calmly repeated his assurances as he rained gentle kisses on my hair. You don't have to worry about anything. Ah, uh, His words somehow didn't ease my doubts. Who was the spinner of tales? Why was he tormenting Luke? Nothing was resolved. I still hadn't regained my memory. And yet? I wonder why. Sitting here with him like this, I feel my worries dissolve. All that pent-up anxiety seemed to dissipate. I felt a sense of calm wash over me. Um, Luke, is this some kind of magic? <laughs> I felt him giggle near my ear when I asked him. I suppose it's kind of like magic. Uh, I couldn't help but wonder. Thank you, Luke. Your magic helped calm me. All my worries seemed to disappear, and my heart was at ease. I felt I could sleep tonight without having nightmares. Luke is so mysterious. Those were my thoughts as I watched this young man smile in relief. Hey Alice! So you're letting me introduce the next page, right? <laughs> I'm very honored. But it seems there's been an unpleasant development. I grabbed his arm to stop him. Um, Luke, you haven't fully recovered yet. Why don't you stay here tonight? That's... You don't want to? That's not it. It's not that I don't want to. I really appreciate your offer, but... I prepared for the tea party, with Luke helping me from time to time. Lots of milk and two spoonfuls of sugar, right? Huh? Luke was wide-eyed with a surprise when I asked him as I poured the tea. Oops, did I get it wrong? No, that's right. He is acting strange. I was a bit puzzled, but added the milk and sugar. There's just one thing that's bothering me. Are Allison had her going to sleep in separate beds or not? I can't imagine the gentlemanly hatter making a move on Alice. Can you? Yep, I trust you, hatter. <laughs> <laughs>